Hey guys, it is time for another cookie video. So this is the last set of recipes that I have to share with you this month. I did have 12 recipes total. If you guys missed the first six, I'll link that video down below. And then I had another six that I wanted to share, but I ran out of butter. So I just called it quits after five because my house is full of cookies right now. We have been gifting a lot of them and sending them home. So. We're not keeping them all in the house, but we have tried them all and they are all very delicious. So the five that I have to share with you guys today are just as good as the last set. So let's go ahead and get down to my counter and start whipping these cookies up. Cake mix cookies are not only super delicious, but they are extremely easy to make. You cannot get any easier than cake mix cookies. So I'm starting off by adding my mix into my mixing bowl. And I'm using a red velvet just because I wanted them to be red for the holidays. But you can use any kind of cake mix that you want. Just get that whole bag into your mixing bowl. Add in a third cup of oil. I'm using avocado oil. And then one and two eggs. That's it. Three ingredients for the easiest cookies and delicious. I'm gonna mix these together and my oven is preheating to 375 degrees. I mean, look at that beautiful red color. This is why I love red velvet during the holiday. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape my sides, get the extra dough off my paddle attachment here, and then we're going to get these ready to bake. I totally thought I hit record and I was not, but these cookies are so easy. You, I mean, just a basic walkthrough is fine. So my dough finished mixing. I scooped out with a little spoon and I just, the dough is very sticky. So all I do is I don't roll my dough into a ball first. I drop it into my powdered sugar. And then once it's all coated, they are super easy to roll into little balls. So I have about 26 cookies here. My oven is preheated to 375 and I'm going to bake them for about 10 minutes. All right, our red velvet crinkle cookies are done. Like I mentioned, super easy to turn any cake mix into a cookie and just add that powdered sugar for an extra crinkle effect. It's always a thumbs up at my house. All right, fluffernutter or <laughs> peanut butter marshmallow fluff cookies coming right up. For these peanut butter fluff cookies, I'm actually starting with the dry ingredients. So I just added two thirds cup of flour to my bowl, one teaspoon of baking soda, and a pinch of salt. Just going to whisk this up. Now we are at my mixer, and I am adding in one stick of softened butter, one and one cup of creamy peanut butter. And I'm going to mix these together. Okay, now that that is all nicely creamed, I'm adding in one egg and one teaspoon of vanilla bean paste or vanilla bean extract is a fine. I just have this vanilla bean paste I picked up a while ago from Trader Joe's, so I wanted to go ahead and use that this time. And we're just gonna mix these in. Now we're adding in our dry mixture and we're just going to mix this until it becomes a pretty thick dough. All right, I'm going to cover my bowl with some plastic wrap and let it cool or chill in the fridge for an hour. All right, my dough is chilled. My oven is also preheated to 375 degrees. And now I have a cookie scoop or you can use a spoon. I'm just getting a little bit there. And then I also have some jet puffed marshmallow cream and I'm getting a little bit and I'm just adding that to my cookie. And I'm gonna put some more of the peanut butter dough on top of that, and I'm gonna get it on my extremely greased cookie sheet. All right, my cookies are ready to go in the oven for eight to nine minutes. All right, here are the peanut butter marshmallow fluff cookies. Now, this recipe was good. The cookies taste bomb, but I think if I make these again, I'm not gonna do it the way that they suggest. And I'll have the recipes linked in the description box for these, but I would like 
mix in the fluff into the peanut butter dough and then just put them as balls because you can see here like I mean, they're good. They're really good. They're just a little messy looking. For like gift giving, I think next time, or if you guys wanna try these out, I would swirl the fluff through the peanut butter cookie dough and then make little balls and cook them that way, but they are super delicious. White chocolate and candy canes go perfectly together in this cookie recipe. Starting off with one stick of softened butter, half a cup of brown sugar, and a quarter cup of granulated sugar. And we are going to cream these together. We are going to add one egg and one teaspoon vanilla extract or vanilla bean paste. Whatever you have is just fine. And let's get these mixed in. In a separate mixing bowl, we're going to add one and a quarter cup flour half a teaspoon salt, and a quarter teaspoon baking soda. Just gonna give these a little whisk. All right, I added the flour mixture to my mixing bowl and I'm going to slowly mix this in. All right, now that we've got our cookie dough ready, we're going to add in some extra yummy flavor and that is a cup of white chocolate chips and half a cup of crushed candy canes. Now you can buy these already crushed or just buy some candy canes it took me about six to whack <laughs> in a baggie for that half a cup and I'm just going to mix these into my dough all right I got all of my dough onto greased cookie sheets you could use parchment paper as well this made about 32 but I'm gonna get these not in the oven in the fridge and let them chill for one hour Okay, my cookie dough balls are nicely chilled. I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees, and I'm going to cook these for 10 to 12 minutes just until the edges start to brown. All right, cookies are baked and completely cooled. These are super yummy. I love the flavors of white chocolate and peppermint together. I am actually not a huge fan of peppermint in drink form, but in cookie form, I am all for it. If you like cinnamon rolls for breakfast, you're definitely going to love these cinnamon roll cookies for dessert. For these cookies, we're starting with two sticks or one cup of butter softened, adding in a cup of sugar, and I've got this in my mixer and I'm just going to cream them together. All right, I'm adding in one and two eggs along with a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Let's get these mixed together. All right, now we are going to add in our dry ingredients. So I've got one, two, and three cups of flour. One, two, and three teaspoons of baking powder, and half a teaspoon salt. And we are going to slowly mix these together. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot one of the most important ingredients. Two teaspoons of cinnamon. Now we can finish mixing this up. All right, now that my dough is complete, I'm going to get this in the fridge and let it chill for 30 minutes. All right, my cookie dough is chilled. I rolled them into little balls. I have them on a cookie sheet with parchment paper. I dip the bottom of a glass in some flour. They are gonna stick a little sometimes though. And I'm going to, let's see, that one has a little bit too much flour on it. I'm gonna wipe it off. I have my ovens preheated 375 and I'm going to bake these for eight minutes. Okay, all the cookies are done. I got about 47 out of this batch and I forgot to flatten these ones, but that's okay. They're still gonna be super delicious with the icing, but I am going to let these cool completely. And speaking of icing, let's go ahead and whip that up. Okay, so to my bowl, I'm adding one stick or half a cup of butter. I did soften this up a bit. And then half a block or four ounces of cream cheese. I did pull this out when I first started making the cookie so it could get nice and soft. Then I'm also going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I'm just going to use my hand mixer to mix these together. All right, now that that is mixed up, I'm adding in a total of two and a half cups of powdered sugar. And then just so the powdered sugar doesn't get everywhere, I like to just take a spoon and mix it in just a little bit first, and then we'll continue beating it until it is nice and creamy. 
All right, and this is a little thick, so I'm just gonna add two teaspoons to start, but then just whatever consistency you like your icing, you can add more milk a teaspoon at a time. Okay, once your icing is the consistency that you want it, get a gallon or quart. I just like a gallon because it's easier to work with, but a quart is just fine. Size baggy and add your icing in there. I do it a scoop at a time and then I get as low as I can and I kind of push the bag together on either side and clean off my spoon so the majority of the icing gets in there. So I'm gonna finish doing this. All right, my cookies are completely cooled. I push as much air as I could out of the icing bag. I did seal it up just so no icing <laughs> escapes from the top and just with some kitchen scissors, just cut the tiniest tip off because you can always make it bigger. You can't make it smaller. And then you're just going to ice your cookie really however you want. I'm gonna do it in circles like a cinnamon roll. And you can go as heavy or as light-handed as you want on this icing. Okay, one more step to top off these cinnamon roll cookies. You can sprinkle a little cinnamon on top. I, however, have this Cinnamon Toast Crunch Cine Dust, and that's what I'm going to use to top these off. I'm just going to sprinkle them all over the top and then shake off the extra because it definitely comes out a little heavy out of this container. Oh man, I'm glad I made these on the small side. These are so good. If you haven't tried Texas Sheet Cake, in cake form or cooking form, you are definitely missing out if you are a huge fan of chocolate. All right, for this recipe, I just have a mixing bowl. We're gonna let the KitchenAid rest for a little bit. And then I have this box of Duncan Hines a Perfectly Moist Triple Chocolate Cake Mix. You can use any kind of chocolate cake mix. That's all you need for this recipe. Well, not all you need, but just any kind of chocolate cake mix. It doesn't matter the brand. So I'm going to add my bag of the cake mix into my mixing bowl, along with a third cup of oil and two eggs. So there's one and two. And I'm just gonna whisk up the eggs a little bit right here. All right, and now I'm just gonna mix these three ingredients together. All right, my oven is preheating to 350 degrees. I have my cookie sheets lined with parchment paper and I'm just taking like a heaping tablespoon and getting my dough onto the cookie sheet. All right, I got about 27 cookies out of the mix based on the size that I used. So I'm gonna get these in my 350 degree oven for eight minutes. Now that they are done baking, I'm just going to let them chill over here for a little bit and we are going to make some icing for them. Okay, so while the cookie's cool, we're going to make the frosting. I've got one stick of butter, one and two tablespoons of cocoa powder, and then one, two, and three tablespoons of milk that I have added to my saucepan. All right, I use my whisk just to break up the butter a bit. I have my heat on medium and I'm just going to whisk this together until everything is nice and mixed and that butter is completely melted. All right, the butter is completely melted. Everything is mixed together. I'm turning my heat off and I'm going to add in one and then two and a half cups of powdered sugar. And I'm just going to continue using my whisk and mix this all together. Okay, I've got my frosting nice and smooth and now I'm just going to drizzle it over each cookie, trying to completely cover the top. And this will set, so it'll be not like super rock hard, but it won't be runny like it is now. All right, I could not wait for it to set. I had to swipe one and oh my goodness, so, so good. These are gonna be gone in no time. They are gonna take a little bit of time to set because I did double up. That frosting batch made quite a bit. So I went around once and then I had plenty left to go around another time. So that's what I did. And then, like I said, I swiped one. Super, super yummy. 
All right, I hope you guys enjoyed those. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new. If you make any of these recipes or you have made something similar, let me know down in the comments how you like them. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.